What's we're it getting all the about? Delivery. We're getting the delivery of the trailer and air monitors. Yeah. Yay! After how many years, you oh, guys? Six, um, maybe. Nine years. Nine We've years. been waiting. Nine years. Yeah. Well, we're a patient group. <laughs> nine years, nine well, months. We women can wait. We're persistent. Yay. Here's my thing. Don took this. I gave it to him, and he never returned it. This is awesome. Response to comments. I have to laugh. <laughs> Holy cow! So here's another. This is a monitor. This is right what here. got us. This is what got us this trailer. <laughs> um, and this is Valero responding, or their ESA guy. The commentator has pointed out that several years ago, energy supply became much less reliable for reasons that may have been real or manipulated. During this crisis where rolling blackouts were necessary, critical energy customers such as hospitals and refineries were given preference over local residential customers. In such instances, maintaining power to refineries represents a protection of public safety as a sudden loss of power could abruptly halt the refining process, which is what <laughs> happened, and trigger extremely intense flaring. The refinery could require several weeks to resume normal operations. Yeah, so this is sitting here, which is like, oh man, it's way bigger than they need. But, yeah, but, um, it's, yeah, it's like a trailer. Yeah, it's got yeah. two air All it needs to do is put in shelving. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's it, it, outrageous. Right, if you wanted to permanently locate it here, then that would be the thing to do. But there's power right to here with no meter. Okay. And so we, we, we should go in the office here, and Jimmy has the information that she's, she's talked to um, pg &E. And it takes them a while to do anything. Um, this had been um, uh, set up for Nextel, and so this power hasn't been been uh, used for uh, five or six years. But all the wires are there from the pole, mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of setting a new meter, and then that would be you guys. So that temperature, uh, wind speed, wind direction, and humidity. What's the little funnel for? The funnel is that's a that's the for the sample to come in for the uh, black carbon monitor. Okay. Um, and the reason there's a funnel like that is to keep rain from getting in mm -hmm. uh, into the sampler itself. So everything's always pointed down. Okay, right. Uh, that guy in the middle there, the big thing, yeah, the that's big one. actually the uh, particulate monitor. Okay. And that's a big issue dealing with forest fires especially. Yep. Um, so black carbon is a particulate. It has a really bad health effect on people and that's what's measured by you know the emissions coming from the refinery as well as this railroad traffic yep uh, that's just a regular particulate monitor so that's just not necessary whereas black carbon is specifically black carbon that's just particles of size 2.5 microns or smaller okay 
and 2.5 microns is the particles that actually, if you breathe them in, stick in your lungs. Exactly. So if they're bigger than that, you breathe them back out, not that big a deal. The smaller ones, they get stuck. Right, to the bloodstream. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So that guy right there, here, the blue thing. Okay. That's actually the ultra, the UV open path air monitor. So it's shooting a beam of ultraviolet light out to okay. the And it comes back and any gas that crosses that beam that absorbs ultraviolet light will be detected. And so that's benzene, toluene, xylene, SO2. Hey, Good Eric. Here's Good Eric. Day. And on the inside, this is where all the data is collected. So we have these, these are the actual analyzers themselves. So a lot of it, the analyzer for the black, for the particulate is actually on the roof itself. Okay. But the UV system's there, the ozone monitor's there, the black carbon monitor's here, and then the output for the UV system is actually right here. And so this is it, and this is the, the light beam. If there was no, nothing present in the beam, let's do it this way. Let's make this a little bit smaller to start with. And I'll do that, and I'll shrink this a little bit. So if there were no gas in the air right now, yeah. I don't that actually happen. I will do this with a bit of magic. Mm -hmm. So let's this set to zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what the light beam looks like when there's no gas in the in the present in the beam. Okay. Yeah. Now the really neat thing about these air monitor systems is we use calibration cells that are have a fixed amount of the particular gases we're looking for that sit in the system itself. Okay. okay? So right now. That's what you would normally see. If there was a gas present, some of this light would actually get absorbed. Mm -hmm. And if I take my calibration cell that's up there and move it into the light beam, magically what you will see oh, okay. is uh -huh. light being absorbed. And sure. so this is actually the things in the middle. That's where benzene absorbs light. Right. And this guy right here is where paraxylene absorbs light. So that's gas in, gas out. We can calibrate these anytime we want, any you know, remotely. Yep. And it actually now does it automatically. So every day the system will calibrate it itself. Oh, fantastic. Great. So it, everything will run by itself. So that's how we determine what gases are in the air. This is how we do our calibration. And again, to just get it back to its normal operating mode, I just tell it to move that calibration cell out of the beam, mm -hmm. and it just goes back to normal. Okay. So Interesting. all of the data here is being collected on these computers. There's two here, there's one here, small one there. Those are then connected to the internet, and that's where you get all your data to the websites. And do you do a backup? Do yes. Data backup all oh, yeah. the time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Great, great, great. Yeah, we, we back it up locally and we do it on the in the web itself. So all the raw data is always being saved. It can always be reviewed by people whenever they want. So if there's a power outage? Well, if there's outage. a power outage, you know, we, we could put in, and we do for other places, backup power supplies. Yeah. They don't typically run that long because mm -hmm. they're a battery and they just run down. But a lot of times, especially at a refinery, if there's a power outage, right. that's when you're going to get gas releases. Right. So here, I'm not really all that worried about it. We're not, you know, we would wait for the power to come back on. We do have, if there's a long-term power outage, a generator, get okay. everything back running again. Um, 
but you know we're not all that concerned about this spot. Whereas at a refinery, you always want to have everything on that. Oh yeah, well so. that was the eighty thousand pounds of yeah. sulfur dioxide in twenty fifteen. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm glad you still kept some of the chairs there from the. Yeah, <laughs> this all came from that trailer. The trailer. That's very funny. <laughs> Valero trailer chairs. I know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what a legacy. Yep. Yeah.